So this week I've been experimenting with hair on cards, as we used to call it in the old days. Basically it's hair on a polygon and it gives this wonderful effect where you can get this really thin strandy hair that I couldn't do in any of my other videos. I'll actually put a link up above to our other hair videos, but let's have a look at how we do it on a, on a sculpt like this. So before I start doing anything on this um, major sculpt, let's go all the way back to basics. So let's just literally open up a basic scene. And what we'll do is we'll start from the very, very basic. So you can start to understand what it is I'm actually doing here with this one. Okay, so uh, rather than explaining to you straight away like I'd normally do, I'm just going to do it and I'm going to talk to you while I do it. So you, you know, you're going to ask questions probably as, as I'm doing it, but actually by the end of it, it'll be fully explained. So I'm going to open a plane and this is what I'm going to put the hair on. So the hairs aren't individual strands like we've seen in the past. So we put wireframe on so we can see the wireframe. I'm going to tap up here and we're going to bring the subdivision right down. Now you can do more or less. If you want the hair to bend more, you probably put more squares in. But I like to do it really low because I can always add later. So once you've got maybe something like that, so six or seven by seven, you go validate and then you've just got a plane. So it's an absolute plane. But the problem with these planes are they're not UV mapped. So we simply come up here and a UV map means we can apply a texture to it. So what we want to do is come to up to the geometry tab here and go across to miscellaneous and just hit UV unwrap. And you see there in the background, that is our UV tile done. This is now UV unwrapped and can take a texture. We can put any texture we want on that. Um, how do we do that? Well, we come into this panel. It's got the material at the top and all of these, these buttons at the bottom. And we, if we just wanted to put a texture on it, this is quite a useful video in itself. It's just tap in this little square here, go photos, and then just put any picture you want on it. So let's just find literally any picture we want. So we'll put the big demon dude. And there you go. Now, a couple of things you might notice. One, he's back to front. So that always happens with this. So we could flip that round. But as long as you're aware of that, it doesn't really matter for hair. And also, it you know, it the, the scaling of it, you, you can actually play with a, a little bit. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make hair that just sits in the middle of this. And we're not going to use a texture. So we can just delete that. We're going to use a texture in this channel here which is our opacity channel. You probably can't see it yet, but it's this second to last one at the bottom. So what we're going to put in there is an alpha, which you may well have seen from down here, that in, in where, where we use it for doing alpha stamps and stuff like that. But for us to do it, let's just paint one and I'll show you how I do hair. So let's switch over to Procreate. Okay, so we're in a blank Procreate screen. I've made it 2048 by 2048. Doesn't matter, just make it square. It makes your life much easier at the start. Make it black and just flood fill it with black like that. Same as we would do for making a normal alpha and then just make your brush white. The only brush I use for this for now is Technical Pen 1 and that's because it gives me a nice flow that goes to a point. So it's like an ink pen that goes to, to a tip and I bring the opacity down. Now the first thing I want to do is just do a couple of strands. So I'm just gonna start here and do strands like that. And you see how it's gray? If I do it over again, I'm going to go whiter where they cross over. So that's 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 not particularly a good thing to do. So if you want to go grey will be less um, visible. So you go grey and do a few grey ones. If you want white, go back to white. Don't do the transparency that I just, I just showed you on the first one. And that would be some hairs. So first of all, we could just share that. So I'll just send it to my photo uh, library for now um, rather than saving it. Now, if that's working out for you, what you can do is you can take them and you can duplicate them. So we can just go, uh, oh, actually, I've, I've, I've made a classic mistake there. I've actually drawn on the black background. So that's a really good thing not to do. What I should have done was this, and I should have drawn on its own um, layer. And the reason, because obviously what I just showed you is because I want to use that over and over again, I want to do uh, have a nice transparent background. So there's another hair piece done like that. And I could just keep duplicating it. And you literally can do anything you want here now. It, 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 it doesn't, there's no set rule for this at all. I'm just thinking about how hair would be presented on a head. So these that I'm building are what we might as well call clumps. 
Um, so, so they're not individual hair strands. Each of this, each of what I draw here, will come together on one tile. And as you can see, this will be the same tile in our um, in, in Nomad. Now, what you can do is you can take that one and you can say duplicate that one. In fact, let's just do them all, and then duplicate them all together, and then bring that one lower. You can flip it, so flip horizontal, so that it's not all the same angle. And and variation is your friend in this. And that's a nice tuft of hair there now. So we'll save that one. So we share and we'll just do save again. And save image. And we can get a little bit crazy. So we can go, um, we can like weld all them together or merge them together. And we could say scale them down and we could warp them. So we could go really crazy and get some, you know, I, I, I've got some videos coming on with hedgehog spikes uh, instead of hair and I've also I'm planning on doing it with feathers and I'm also planning on doing it with grass as well so to give you a you know a, a good idea of how we can use this so I've changed it a little bit and we'll share that one now one tip um a really good tip and something I got wrong in the in the first instances do you see this background being black you have to absolutely make sure that that is all the way to black it has to be zero has to be you know as black as it can be because if it's not even if it's one or two percent that will actually show through so just be aware of that one um and i'll save that one one more time save okay now switch back to nomad and we'll take a look at them okay so here i am back in nomad and we've got our model as we had it and what i'll do is i'll come instead of going into texture i'll come all the way down here into opacity I go to photos and then you'll see all of the ones we just made. So let's just take um, the first one, for example. And there you go. Now, look at what happened here. See how you can still see the um, the background. Turn turn the wireframe off. See how it's still like a greyish color. That's because it's not black. Now, if you, have a, if you have a look at the last one that I did and there you go, it's completely um, you, you can't see the background at all. Now, what you can do is, what, one thing I just noticed that I wanted to show you is if you go to the back of it, you'll see the, 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 a particular colour. And that's defined up here. So you can do a couple of things. So let me, let me just come to where it's actually set. So in here, where it says two-sided, you can either change the colour there or you can turn that off and then you won't see it from the back. So that might be a problem for you, depends on, on, on how you're going to present your hair. If you're going to be turning it around a lot, then I'd put a colour on the back, maybe black or dark brown, something like that. Now, a couple of things. So first of all, now that's just on a plane. So what you can do is just use the move tool and you can just move that around. Now, straight away, something's going on there. So what's happening there? So what's happening is... I've got the color blue selected here. So let's just change that for red for now. And as I come to move, I've act, uh, when I started, I've got painting turned on. So as I move, it will change the color in the area that I'm moving based on this size of brush. Now that is actually your friend because what you can do is rather than even adding a texture to this, you can paint the color on this hair by painting the overall polygon. Remember what we're doing, so if I turn that off, um, sorry, if I if I put it all the way up and then maybe just delete it for a second, remember what we've got here is just a plane. So it's just a polygonal plane. So if I paint on it, you can paint any color you want. So you could do, you know, you could do greens, reds, blues. It doesn't, it really doesn't matter. And what we're doing is with this texture here, the opacity map, what we're doing is we're then hiding everything that's um, black. So as you can see, that's giving you a color. Now for hair, we're gonna want something like maybe dark brown. So we'll stay on the paint. So we'll, we'll go all the way over here, dark brown. And then you, want, you might want to go to a, a lighter color as it gets to the end, something like that. Or, or some combination. And bear in mind, this isn't lit at all yet. This is simply just us, you know, doing it in, in, in the basic scene file. But what, but what happens when I move it, I think what I was explaining to you is if I take move and then I have move on with colour, as I move that area, it does, it does colour it. And that later on, when you're in your model, becomes your friend. Now, if you've got one layer like this, you can come up here 
and you can say clone it and you can move that around scale it a bit and you can even use i'll turn the painting off just while i do this next bit so I'll move with painting off and you can see now i'm moving it around to get some variation in it but you, can you see now how you, you you've got depth to some degree because you've got a layering system there so let's take them both. I'm going to put the grid on for a second. And then what I'll do is I'm going to rotate them both up and the other one as well. Rotate that one up. Oops, got them both selected there. I don't want to do that. So I want to take the other one and rotate that one up as well. You don't have to do this. This is just me noodling around with it now. And then just keep repeating them so and what you can also do is rotate them a bit depending on the angle that you're going to want your hair and this is a basic card system so this is how it would work for for it you know before we got hair systems in 3d this is how we would do a lot of of, of hair and you can see it in in films like ice age one of the early mammoths was done with thousands and thousands of hair cards like this and you can change the alpha, don't forget, because um, we were just using one alpha there. So if we come back on here and then we change it to um, one of the other alphas. Remember, it wasn't fully black. So it's, it, you know, it still shows a little bit on the outside there. But if that's fully black and you've done that, then this and this is pretty much how you'll, you'll see this in game engines. You'll see it in all kinds of you know pretty much it's very very common it's just that until we got textures um when we got that update with with adding uvs and textures then that's when we were able to to do it in here one thing i did think was funny is you could apply them onto a spline so you could take that plane that we've got there and you can say add a um array so make sure it's in the array so we've got the plane in the array like so and then we'll tap on the array. Now what we can do is we can have a play because I've got a count of one here. So if I push my count up to, oh, let's change the name. Let's just push the count up a little bit more like so. You can see there we've got a quite, a, I mean, there's a huge amount of, 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 uh, of items in there, but you can get really, really technical with this again. This is highlighted how bad it is if you don't have a black image. So, it, you know, I think I'm right to show you this. Um, and what you want to do now is is really think about how you stack things up and how you make them. Um, you know, these these look obviously far too um, uh, the same, too much of a repeat. So you've got to be careful if you're going to use a repeat function with, you know, with... Um, the curve tool i i wouldn't recommend it until you've got really comfortable with with doing this sort of system so let's go back to our main um uh, creature and have a look at how we implement that okay so all of a sudden this doesn't feel that complex uh it, it feels really complex until you know about cards and card system and then suddenly it's a case of well all of these are individual cards and how can we tell so if you come down here and put outline on you can see that they're stacks of cards um, and, and mine are all uh, merged together. So, you know, some of them, you, you know, are, are kept separate, but these are groups. So let me pull one group out for you and you'll see. So that entire hair system there that's all welded together is all done um, as a, maybe about 10 or 15 cards all stacked up. You can actually see the repeats now. You, you know, once you know about the system, then, you know, it gets it gets to be... Uh, um a, a little bit a little bit less like magic and much more like procedural stuff these here which are the sideburns you can see um so i've got all of them stacked up differently like so i'll turn them off as i come to them now there's a couple of things that i want to show you so we'll turn that off um and because you now know that they're made up of multiple sets of cards when i use the move tool watch it moves it as a block now if yours isn't doing that and it's moving smaller amounts then that means let's move the lighting around so you can see it a bit better what you may have set on up here is under filter you might have con connected topology turn off now watch what happens now so i'm now tweaking the individual cards 
And that's brilliant because now we can really sort of um, manipulate the hair so it doesn't look repeated. So pu push it together into clumps, smaller brush, and then you're actually messing around with polygons here. Nothing to do with the hair, that's just an image on a polygon. But you can now manipulate that to get the hair design that you want. Um, so, so that that is all I'm doing there is just moving those chunks of polygons all around until until we get the you know the right kind of look and feel for the hair. Now combine that with a really good lighting system, which I've shown in many many videos, and some nice materials, you can get a really stunning effect. And that's pretty much what you've probably seen on some of my videos in in the, the last few weeks if you've been watching my. Um, uh, my Instagram channel. But I just thought I'd share that. I've done it on quite a few characters. Here's another one that I like. This creepy lady is like a kind of a, I don't know what it is actually, it's some kind of witchy kind of thing with big Ray-Bans on or something like that, I don't know. But again, you can see the hair, very, very complex um, and looks really cool, especially from the front angle. And in the background, you can see all that, that grainy stuff, that is out of focus hair. So this is is a bit crazy uh, and you know it, it all adds up to you know overall a very very cool character um the, the hair makes such a difference and sadly we don't have you know a, a hair simulation in nomad yet but you know this is a way to really help bring your characters to life i really hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are please give us a thumbs up because it does help us to get in front of other people who like this kind of content and if you like us enough to give us a thumbs up then subscribe down below and help us build the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great week, everyone.